Greg! Yes! So I have the AMC Stubbs A-List, and what that is, is a monthly subscription service. I loved the CBS special thing you put there. Yes. That was awesome. I well, love that, that. That was a slip click. That was actually the premiere. So ah, was, okay, okay. I still thought that was cool. I still but thought I can, that was really I cool. can replace the transition, but yeah, whatever. I thought, yeah, I thought that was neat. Okay, so I have the AMC Stubbs A-List, and what that is is a monthly subscription service where for nineteen ninety five a month, I get three free movies a week, three free movie tickets at an AMC theater. It's a lot more expensive in bigger cities. If I lived in San Diego, if I lived in Nueva York, if I lived in Chicago, it would be a lot more expensive. I live in the middle of nowhere. It's 1995 a month. And from December 2018 to March 2020, in a 66 week period of time, I saw 177 movie showings. Like seven of them were Captain Marvel, six of them were Knives Out. Yeah. Four of them was Cats. I should get an award for that. Yes, you should, damn it. And then the pandemic happened, which closed all movie theaters and ruined my goddamn streak. It messed up my groove, but now movies are back and so am I. So it's time once again for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. Da -da -da -da. And this installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 20th week back in theaters. And in that time, I have seen 36 movies in theaters. I saw three movies this week. All right. And it is the first time in a very long time that I have seen three movies. So I saw this past week, I saw the following three movies in theaters that we will be discussing. The horror movie Antlers. Uh, Dune, a.k.a. Emo Willy Wonka's Wacky Desert Adventure. Yes. And a that, That's Disney... what it's called in Japan. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Emo Willy Wonka's Wacky Desert Adventure. And a Disney Plus Day surprise screening. Now, first, let's discuss the two movies that were not chosen as my movie pick of the week. Number one, Antlers. This is a horror film starring Carrie Russell as a teacher going back to the small town that she was born in. And there's a troubled young boy who, who is harboring a deep, dark secret. Um, I, was, I was scared going into this film because I'm on Twitter and, and, and I'm on social media and I, I'm on film Twitter and all of that. I didn't hear a single goddamn person talk about antlers. Not a <laughs> single person. I didn't hear someone say it was good. I didn't hear someone say it was bad. I didn't hear a single fucking person talk about this at all. And, it, and I, I was thinking, is this a good sign? Is this a bad sign? I wasn't sure. Yes, it's executive produced by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, a lot of people know him as an amazing director. I know him as the familiar, as the familiar to a vampire. What's the name of the vampire that he's a familiar Nandor. to? Nandor, thank you. Yes. I, I know Nadja, and I know Jackie Daytona. I have a hard time remembering the name Nandor. Nandor, okay. So I went to go see Antlers, and... Uh, it's a decent monster movie. Yeah. It's a decent... I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call it the horror movie. It's an okay monster flick. It's not great. It's not wonderful. But it's okay. But here's the thing. This is the best thing I can say about the movie. Sometimes that's all you want. Yeah. When it comes to monster movies... Sometimes you don't want to see the best. Sometimes you don't want to see the worst. Sometimes you just want to see an okay monster movie. And yeah. that's Antlers. It's all right. It's pretty good. And uh, slight spoiler alert, it's a Wendigo movie. Yeah. I kind of figured. They don't... Yeah. But, but like, 
I don't know supernatural things. I don't know cryptozoology, and I haven't watched all of Supernatural. So I didn't know that it was a Wendigo until literally the wise old Native American looked at the camera and said, well, of course you don't believe this because you white people don't believe in such superstitions, but my people are so wise and Native American and wise and attuned with the earth that we can tell you what this creature is, what you're dealing with is a wendigo and like literally you're staring you have that wise old native american literally stare at the screen and tell you what the monster is and i feel like any other person like if my wife was there if mal was there oh they would know in like 25 minutes that it was a wendigo but i was totally clueless and i'm like shit okay i I, I just find i just find it funny that like like Wendigo is like the new hip monster for like about mm-hmm. the past 20 years, you know, taking over the title from the Chupacabra. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so here's, here's where there's a problem with the movie Antlers. Uh, Carrie Russell, she comes back to the small town that she was born in. She's been gone for the longest time. She's been gone for the longest time because when she was young, her mother died. And so her father started drinking and abusing the uh, the kids and started molesting her. And now she has an alcohol problem. And she deals with people that have drug addictions. And so what the movie does is it co-ops these serious topics to give the film an importance that it doesn't deserve because it's just a fucking monster movie. It's just a fucking monster movie, but suddenly, hey, this film is about drug abuse. It's about child abuse. It's about uh, child molestation. It's about poverty. It's about racism. It's about molestation. It's about sexual abuse. And it's like, okay, we get it. You want to be a serious drama, you're a fucking monster movie. Yeah. Okay, let you me know? just take a, a quick guess at the plot. Uh, there's a young, like, Norwegian couple, and they're farmers, and and and, and when Digo gives birth, and the little baby Wendigo, they, they make it like it, it's their child. It's a weird plot. Uh, there, there's a troubled young boy in class, and Carrie Russell is trying to help this troubled young boy in class. But what Carrie Russell doesn't know is that his dad is turning into a monster, and he's trying to take care of his dad and his son, who is turning into a monster. And then people start dying, and like, it's it's a monster movie. The the twelve year old boy who is the troubled kid, he should, he should get a million fucking Oscars. He is, it's one of the most amazing performances I have seen all year. He is incredible. He really does a good job of being the troubled kid in class and a, a, an amazing performance. Yeah. But it's just a fucking monster movie, and it's upsetting that this film is using drug abuse and child abuse and child trauma and rape and uh, Native Americans as props to give the film a gravitas that it just doesn't fucking deserve. Still, it's an okay monster movie, and if you're into that sort of thing, go and see it, and it's all right. It, it's okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, so that's Antlers. The second movie that is not chosen for my movie pick of the week is Dune. Dune. Yes. Fucking Dune. Okay, so... Uh, picking up the mask for this. I had seen the original Dune, David Lynch's Dune, once or twice growing we up, like in my like, teens and 20s. We covered it. We did? We did we see it? We covered it on YouTube. Yeah. Huh. Way fucking back there. I don't remember the... at fucking all about that. But yeah, like I had seen it a couple of times, but like I was 
never a fan, and, and I had never read the 3,000 book series at all, because there's like 3,000 books in that series. It's fucking ridiculous. So I said, when I went to go see the new Halloween movie, uh, Halloween, Halloween 13, a.k.a. Halloween 3. Yeah. Which is also Halloween 13 in this timeline. It's all fucking confusing. But I went to go see Halloween Kills, and I said, I'm going to take this seriously. So I saw how the original Halloween, and then Halloween 2, and then Halloween 3, and then uh, the 2018 Halloween, and I had a Halloween marathon. And then so I, when I went to see Halloween Kills, I'm like, I am taking this movie seriously. So when I got tickets to Dune, I took that seriously too. I woke up, I saw the original I saw this wonderful YouTube video that discusses the entire timeline of the entire Dune book series. I watched the original Dune again a second time, and then I went to go see the first, the new Dune movie. And I liked the new Dune movie, but I feel like the only reason why I like the new Dune movie is because I saw the original right before it. If I had not taken this movie seriously, if I had not watched the original Dune twice and then watched the YouTube video that discussed the timeline of the Dune book series, I don't think I would have known what the fuck was going on. Yeah. I don't think I would have understood any of it. And it really, seeing the new Dune made me really appreciate the old 1983, 1984 Dune so much more because it's like, you go in and watch the new Dune movie, and it's like, oh, wow, this is a lot of backstory. But then you see David Lynch's Dune, and it's like, hello, I am the floating head of the narrator. I hope yeah. you have a pencil and paper. I'm telling you the entire backstory in the next five minutes. Yeah. I'll be popping up here and there to let you know what the fuck is going on in this crazy-ass movie. <laughs> and then, like, like I tweeted. I tweeted uh, before I went to go see the new Dune, like, hey, um, is the new Dune 50% just people's fucking thoughts like the original Dune? Half of it is thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Like, I, it feels at times like there's more thoughts <laughs> and we'll, than dialogue. And we'll be talking more about this later, too. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Like, uh, the spice must flow. I'm not sure if I can do this. Maybe I should talk to my father. What is that there? I don't know. I'm thinking in my head. And it's like, fucking... Tell me! Yeah. Yeah, I liked the new Dune. But I will say that in the beginning, where it's just, uh, hey, we're the Dune family. I'm Daddy Dune, I'm Mommy Dune, and I'm young emo Johnny Dune. And I don't know if I want to take over the family business of being Dunes. And then, hey, I'm going to train you how to fight, young Johnny Dune. Hey, we're going to go to Iraq. I'm sorry, Arrakis. And, like, all of that is really fun. Once uh, the bad guys attack and everyone's dead and Mama Dune and Johnny Dune are in the desert, suddenly the film is 20 hours long. Yeah. Like, it's really fun in the beginning when it's in space and it's this space family in space doing space stuff. And, oh, no, there's bad guys coming and they're attacking and there's this big battle. That's so much fun. But when they're just in the desert, like, oh, yeah. my God, that felt for fucking ever. Yeah. So fucking bored. I'm like, God damn, wow, how long is this fucking movie? It felt like the second half of the film was eight times as long as the first half of the film. Still, <laughs> like, eh, I've seen some pretty goddamn bad movies this year. It was a fun film. It is obvious, though, that the film only exists because a studio saw the Dune book series and said, I can make a Star Wars out of this. Yeah. Also, there's warring families. We can make it a Star Wars Game of Thrones in space. And, it, like, it, it's obvious that, you know... I yeah. was talking about it on Twitter, and somebody, uh, I believe, uh, at Sam Davis Boy Hero told me that every Dune movie is created specifically 
for people who have read the Dune books and not for normal people. Yeah. So I kind of feel that that is true, that at Sam Davis Boy Hero is right about that, because, like, I... Even with the original movie, I had a hard time understanding. I love the fact that Sting is just there as gay bait. Yeah. He's, he's just there to... He's just there in a speedo to be like, "Hey, do you want to space fuck me?" I like that. Uh, it, watching the new Dune just made me love the new, the old Dune so much more because it's like, yeah, the old one is a shitty film, but that's why I like it. The new film is trying so hard to be serious, and it's like, fucking, you're gonna be writing giant sandworms. Yeah. And, and they're just, like, crushing it. They're, like, crushing the film in a bad way. Yeah. With, with the heavy-handedness. You know, like... James Brolin tried. Yeah. Jason, Jason Momoa tried. Jason Momoa is there because it's like, hey, I know I'm going to be, I know I'm the Han Solo of this film, and I'm going to try my Han solo -iest. And he kind of, he kind of should be. Yeah. But that kid has just like zero fucking charm. You know, yeah, he's that... got like, he's got like no chemistry with anybody. Yeah, yeah. Fucking uh, Timothy Cha Omelet. He was freaking. I I do not care for emo Willy Wonka at all. Yeah. But yeah, it was all right, and I'll definitely see the second one. But but I mean, it's it's obvious that a studio just just said, "Hey, we can buy this book series and turn it into a Star Wars," and and, and that's what they're trying to do. They want to get six films out of it, eight. 12 uh, movies out of this, and it's like fucking fine, whatever. I don't care enough about the 3,000 book Dune series of novels. Yeah. Um, well, you know, if they're going to make, make a movie at a god emperor of Dune, <laughs> yeah. Like that, I would have to see. Like, not that it's a good book. Yeah. You know, but. Spoiler alert, these are old books. Yeah. Paul Atreides' son becomes a giant sandworm and rules for, like, thousands of years. Yeah, he becomes a giant godworm. It... Not so great a book, you know? Yeah. I, I read it don't care for it, but if you're going to put somebody who turned into a giant fucking sandworm on screen, I've got to see that. Yeah. I've just got to see that. Um, Jezza just uh, posted women don't exist on our Twitch, and I gotta say, uh, Jezza Wow, very open-minded and woke of you. You're right. Gender doesn't exist. Shit. Very cool of you. I we second that. We just destroyed gender. We just destroyed gender on the podcast. We're oh. heroes. Good job, <laughs> yeah. Jezza. Really proud of you. And finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is a Disney Plus Day surprise screening, which I went to as a woman for the first time ever. Female me went to a movie, and it was the scariest moment of my life. Okay, so uh, Disney Plus, every year of the anniversary of Disney Plus, they now do this thing called Disney Plus Day. They, they, uh, they release special things and giveaways and prizes, and it's kind of like the DC fandom that happens every year where they talk about upcoming DC projects and they yeah. show previews of upcoming DC movies. It's like that, but for Disney. Disney Plus Day. They showed a quick preview of Moon Knight, 
starring Oscar Isaac, which I'm really excited about because Moon Knight is fucking insane. Literally. Fucking insane. They showed a preview it seems of like, this. Like, like, I totally don't remember that. I must not have read enough Moon Knight. As far as I remember, it was just a couple of limited series. Yeah, uh, I have a... I have a rotating background wallpaper on my computer, and one of them is a, a panel from a Spider-Man comic. I think it's an Avengers comic, and it's Moon Knight and Spider-Man standing next to each other, and Moon Knight leans over to Spider-Man and says, dude, I was totally spacing out. What's happening right now? And Spider-Man <laughs> says, Gamora seems to be taking over the family business, and Moon Knight goes, okay, cool. Who's Gamora again? And Spider-Man says, look, just punch the people who I'm punching in a minute, okay? <laughs> and that perfectly sums up Moon Knight. It's like Batman if he was batshit. Yeah. You know? It's like a... It's like a... It's like Batman if he was batshit or Deadpool if he was more serious. He's right in between those two. He's right in between Batman and Deadpool. Yeah. He demands vengeance and sometimes goes super violent, but also he's kind of crazy and insane. Right in the middle, that's fucking Moon Knight, and I'm really excited for the Moon Knight series. They also showed a preview of the She-Hulk television show. Yeah. Which also has, what's his nuts, uh, Bark Ruffalo uh, as the Incredible Hulk, and I'm really excited because there's a clip of the both of them, and it looks all grainy like the 1970s, yeah. And Jennifer Walters goes, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. And it's like, nice callback to fucking David Banner. Yeah. You know, that's really cool of you. Because for a lot of people, their first uh, taste of The Incredible Hulk was a TV drama that had yeah. nothing to do with supervillains. And then they showed a, a, a short preview of the Miss Marvel uh TV show, the live action Miss Marvel series, which I'm really excited about. I can't wait for white male comic book fans to get a taste of Miss Marvel, a teenage Muslim girl. <laughs> a teenage Muslim girl who's a superhero. Can't wait for that. And so. Uh, wait, sh wait, 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 wait. She's Miss Marvel? There's. I thought, I thought Monica Rambeau was Miss Marvel. They're both Miss Marvel, but but it, in originally in the comics, yes, Monica Rambeau took up the moniker Miss Marvel, but then later left the name Miss Marvel and became her own superhero, which was Photon. And then recently, within the last I don't know five, six, seven, eight years, um, a young Muslim teenage girl who is a huge Carol Danvers fan took up the title Miss Marvel. And I just can't wait for a Marvel TV show centered around a young Muslim woman. Because yeah. white male comic book fans are going to shit themselves with rage. And that, their anger will fuel me. Yeah. And I will taste their rage and it will bring me joy. It'll make me feel like humans do with spice. Yes. Their white male rage will be my spice. I'll be able to <laughs> fold space. Spice! So, uh, so it, at select AMC theaters, Disney for Disney Plus Day, they did surprise movie screenings. And every day at various times on Friday, Saturday, and today, which is Sunday, they have a surprise live action Disney movie, a surprise Disney animated movie, a surprise Marvel movie, and a surprise Star Wars movie. And I was really excited about this. They did the same thing during October with horror movies. You pay five bucks, you get to see a horror movie. It might be something new like Get Out or Us or the new Candyman. Or it might be something old. You might get a, a poltergeist. You might get an exorcist. You might get a shining. And that was really awesome uh, of an idea. So I went to Disney Plus Day on Saturday. On Friday, they showed 
for the live action Disney movie, they showed The Rocketeer. Yeah. Great fucking movie. For the Pixar movie, they showed Monsters, Inc. I assumed that they would go with the first one, Toy Story, but they went with Monsters, Inc., and that's a great choice. For the Star Wars movie, they chose Rogue One, which I thought was a good... I was hoping that it would be either Rogue One or Solo. And they chose Rogue One, and I was happy with that. And for the Disney animated film, they showed Raya and the Last Dragon, and I thought that's a decent... That's a decent uh, movie choice for the Disney animated feature. I assumed they would just show Frozen. Yeah. But they showed Raya and the Last Dragon. That's a good, I, that was a good choice. So I was really excited to go see it on Saturday. And I decided in the beginning of the week, and it's difficult to, I go to a lot of fucking movies. Yes, you do. But also, I'm trying to be a woman. I'm gender fluid. I'm, I'm male leaning gender fluid. Most of the time I'm a guy, but sometimes I'm a woman and it shouldn't be a big deal. It's fucking 2021. You can wear whatever the hell you goddamn want. We, we, we all have survived a deadly pandemic. It's still going on, but it's 2021. Do whatever you want. Wear whatever you want. Eat whatever you want. It fucking, we all could have died. It doesn't matter. Yeah. None of it matters. So I'm trying to, to, to embrace my feminine side yeah, more. Yeah, and that's, that's what I've been saying a lot, too. Because, like, yeah. I, I still get kind of angry what's going on in the world and shit like that. But, like, I just try to rem remind myself, you know, it's just, it's just basically over. You know, all that's really left is trying to be as happy as you can be before we just fucking go out. Yeah. Yeah. Because nothing is stopping us from going out. So so it for the past couple of months I've been I've been thinking quietly in my head that like I want to go to the movies as a woman. I've never gone to the movies as a woman. Steve has gone to the movies a ridiculous fucking amount of time. I went and saw 177 movie showings in a 66 week period of time between December 2018 and March 2020. But female me has never gone to the goddamn movies. And if female me is going to be taken seriously, then I need to fucking uh, try and go to the movies. But I was scared to do it in my small, racist, bigoted, fucking tiny, small town in the middle of Oklahoma. I was scared about doing that. But when I heard that they were doing these Disney Plus Day surprise screenings, they weren't doing it in my town. They were doing it uh, in Oklahoma City. And it's like, fuck, I can go to a, to, to a movie as a woman there. So I chose a movie theater that's, that's right next to a mall that has since been shut down. The, the movie theater is never packed. And it's like I, all week I've just been like, I'm going to go to the movies as a woman. But the first time ever, I'm super scared. I'm really nervous. And I was talking about it uh, all week on Twitter. And a trans friend of mine uh, saw that on Twitter and said, I'm just saying this for your safety. Because I know the area that you live. If I was you, I wouldn't do it. Just to be safe. And I'm like, I understand uh, I am taking precautions. Yeah, I, 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 I fight so hard not to tell you that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's I, like, I, I, un that, you know, I can't help it. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. I was, I I, was already worried with you being Mexican in the wrong place. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, and I told them, I said, I understand your concerns, but... I, I can't fully under explain this to you, but I have to do this. Yeah. Plus, the movie theater is, is an older theater. It's in the middle of nowhere. I've never seen it packed. It, there's hardly anyone there. Every single solitary time I've gone to the bathroom, I've never been inside of the bathroom with another person, ever. Yeah. And there's like three or four different bathrooms in there. This is the perfect place for me to try and go out uh, as a woman. And my wife said, maybe you should take somebody with you. Do you want to take Amber with you? Do you want to take Mal with you? And it's like, that's another thing. I can't explain this. I have to do this on my own. If it makes all of you uh, uh, feel better, I'll bring a box cutter. I mean, just to be safe. I'll bring a weapon. I'll put a bat in the car. I'll bring a box cutter in my purse. I'll play it safe. 
Yeah. So I, I got honestly, to the movie. Honestly, that would kind of make me feel better. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's exactly what I did. So I got to the movie theater uh, yesterday afternoon. I got there a half hour early. <coughs> I was so nervous. I, I, I said to my wife before I left, I said, Natasha, I want to ask you a question. And she said, sure. And I said, before I ask you this, I, I'm worried that I'm going to be asking you something that I'm scared of. And I'm worried that your calm, rational brain will just automatically spit out, well, you, you, you should do this, duh. But I want you to take into account, I'm more emotional. I want you to take into account my fears and my nervousness. So let me ask you this. What if I need to go to the fucking bathroom in the goddamn movie theater? And my wife just stopped and was like, mm, do you feel comfortable going into the women's restroom? And I said, no. And she said, do you feel comfortable going into the men's restroom? And I said, no. And it's like, well, uh, so I brought an empty two liter bottle with me. That's how scared I was. Okay. To go to the bathroom anywhere in public because I had never gone to a women's bathroom before. I, I, I thought about, I think about Mal a lot when I'm out and about as a woman because Mal told me once one of the best things ever that I absolutely needed to hear at the time. And, and Mal, like, like, I'm tearing up saying this, but Mal, like, like, stopped me at home and just said, your ultimate goal should not be to pass as a yeah. woman. Your goal should be to wear whatever you want and be comfortable in your own body. And you don't have to pass. You don't have to look like a woman in order to be a woman. What matters is that you're yourself. And like I, every time now that I go out as a woman, that is the one thing that's on my mind is what Mal said. Like I have a little Mal on my shoulder yeah. every time that I'm out as a woman. And those words mean so much to me. So, I get to the movie theater and there's a shit ton of families, a shit ton of parents and kids. And they're running all over the place. And it's like, fuck, I brought a tub of, I brought my uh, refillable popcorn bucket so I could eat popcorn during this movie, but there's going to be 300 fucking kids in this theater and they're going to be running around and I won't be able to take off my mask because they'll be able to see my fucking mustache. I'm a mo that I'm a man. Uh, dressed as a woman and it's going to ruin me and I'm so fucking and I, I haven't practiced my female voice and I'm so fucked and what the fuck am I going to do? Maybe I should turn around but I'm like, no, I'm here. We're going to do this. So I get in line and here's the biggest surprise. They were all there to watch the fucking Clifford movie. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? You're, these 30 kids are going to see the shitty-ass fucking Clifford movie that looks like crap, which I'm going to see it tomorrow. It, it looks like <laughs> shit. You're all going to see fucking Clifford? Why are you going to see fucking Clifford? The fuck is wrong with you? So, uh, and here's a surprising thing about being a woman is that when Steve is in line for a movie and there are kids, they're looking at me all scared and they're pointing and they're hiding by their mom and they're not going anywhere near me. Apparently all I need are fucking boobs because all of the kids were talking to me. <laughs> I, it's, I, I'm still the same person, but apparently with boobs and covering up my facial hair, Kids were just walking right up to me like, hi, my name is Mark. What's your name? My mom's letting me buy this from the snack bar. I'm really excited. We're going to see Clifford. What are you seeing? I'm going to go see my mom now. Bye. And like one kid was like, tried to hold my hand, like tugging on my shirt. And it's like, oh my God, you're being so nice to a stranger and your parents are letting it happen because your parents think I have a fucking vagina. <laughs> What a fucking shock this is. So yeah, only one family was going to see the, the Disney movie. And so they were sitting in the middle. I sat in the back row, took my mask off, drank the soda I snuck in, ate popcorn, watched the movie. 
I went to the bathroom twice. I went to the women's room. No one was in the bathroom. No one goes to this fucking theater. It was the perfect time for me to try and be bold. And it was, it was fucking wonderful. I went to the movies as a woman. The sad part was, was that I was under the impression that on Friday, they're going to show all of these surprise movies. And then on Saturday, they're going to show different movies. And then on Sunday, they're going to show different movies. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder what movie I'm going to see. It was Raya and the Last Dragon again. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's disappointing. They're going to be showing the same movies Friday and Saturday and Sunday. On the positive side, tonight at 9.30, they will be showing Rogue One in theaters. Okay. If you're a Star Wars fan, you can go see Rogue One tonight at your participating AMC theater. And it, it was just so exciting that, like, I went to the movies by myself as a woman. I went to the bathroom as a woman for the first time. And when I exited the theater, I took a selfie of myself <coughs> in front of the theater. And I was so happy that I said, fuck it. Steve is scared to go back to the bookstore that fired him along with 1,800 other employees as a desperate cost-cutting measure to stay in business. I, as a woman, I'm going back to the bookstore, and I did. I went back to the bookstore for the first time since 2018, and I went as a woman, and I was so fucking happy. It's been a big weekend for me. What happened there? Uh, I went into the bookstore. I went to the bathroom as a woman in the bookstore for the first time. I went to the kids' section. I, I got two books. And here's the thing. I was walking around the bookstore, and I was looking at every employee, and I'm like, there's two people in the cafe. I don't know who they are. There's a manager doing interviews at the cafe. I don't know who the manager is. Here's someone putting away <coughs> magazines. I don't know who this person is. Here's two people putting away uh, uh, shelving a V-tart. I don't know who these people are. Okay, I'm safe being here as a woman because I didn't work with any of these people. Uh, I Sure, I worked there for a long time, but that was 2018. And now the store has moved on. I don't know any of these people, so I can be comfortable being a woman at this store and so I pick two books to buy, and I go to the register, and of fucking course, I work with the only guy at the register. Yeah. I worked with the guy behind the counter for three years, and I'm like, fuck, I've already done so many firsts. You mean to tell me that I need to face a coworker as a woman an ex-co-worker as a woman and like I'm fucking sweating bullets like oh my god I've got it this is fucking scary as shit I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I can do this and it's like dude you've already done so much you went to the movies you went to the bathroom you've got this so I went and bought the books in front of it went from someone that I worked for three years with yeah they had no fucking clue who I was yeah. at all and afterwards they said okay here you go man have a good day and i'm like thank you you too and i walked right out of there and it was the greatest <coughs> feeling in the world and i felt so good it was the first time that i ever fully felt like i was a woman at first in the near the beginning of the year i'm like okay i'm going to be uh dressing in drag i'm going to be a man doing drag and then eventually i'm going to be a man but I'm going to be a woman now. I'm going to dress as a woman. Yesterday was the first time ever that I felt like I was a woman. And it was one of the biggest, most important times. And so I bought a, uh, a little uh, Raya and the Last Dragon doll. And I've got it in my background because that movie means a lot to me. The movie's okay. But it means a lot to me because it was the first movie that I went to as a woman. So this whole yeah. weekend I, has been a, a, a big weekend of persons for me. It's the first time ever that, like, I, I am a man. And then I'm going to be a woman for a while. And then that was fun. I'm going to change back into a man. But this is the first time that, that like, I'm just going to be a woman for a while. Yeah. And, like, oh, I need to go to the store. I don't know if I should go to the store because I'm, I'm a woman right now and I've never done that. And it's like, fuck, I don't care what anyone thinks right now. I'm going in there. And I went and I bought uh, uh, oranges and apples and straw, uh, uh, bananas for the kids as a woman. And I, I'm just I'm really proud of myself. And I'm, I'm trying to be more. 
this is a chance for me to be someone different. And I haven't been someone different in a really long time. Uh, Steve is very frightened and uh, female me just doesn't give a fuck. And I'm really happy about that. And, and I've done a lot. And so that's my movie pick of the week. I saw Raya and the Last Dragon. I think that came out during the pandemic. I, I think. I, I am still not familiar with this movie. <laughs> yeah. It, apparently, I had only seen like half of it. So I, I this was the first time that I saw it all the way through. And it, it, it's a great movie. And I really liked it. And it's about dragons and what is totally not China. But it's definitely China. And yeah. It's a really good movie, and I, it, it was fun. But it, the movie didn't matter. What matters is that I'm finally trying to be myself. Yeah. For the first time in forever. Cool. For the first time in forever. So that's I am, it. I, I am proud. Thank you. So that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. Uh, Antler, it's all right. Dune, eh, you should see the, the original, because it's a fucking crazy ass shit show and uh, I went to the movies for the first time as a woman and I'm really proud of myself next week I'm going to see Clifford I'm going to see Clifford tomorrow Uh, I don't know what else I'm going to see everyone's ranting and raving about House of Gucci but that just looks like shit to me Yeah, it just looks like it's going to be 2 hours and 45 minutes of hey I'm an Italian Gucci is right but Gucci is also vengeance. Gucci is in vengeance. I am Gucci. You're not Gucci. I'm Gucci. Hey, I'm yeah. gucci here. And I, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, next, be sure and join us next time for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that. Oh, funny. And-